Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To the long time listener and first time visitor, we welcome you to this episode. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fee, kama yuhibu rabbuna wa yarudha. Ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Ya ibadullah, my dear Muslim brother and sister, all of you who have newly accepted Islam and those who have been Muslim for quite some time but are striving to become better upon their deen, never abandon the prayer, never give it up. It is important that we realize the importance of prayer in our life and that it benefits us undoubtedly in the hereafter but it also benefits us in this world as we go through the our trials and tribulations as we go through our ups and our downs the prayer it will be a or an extremely important asset an extremely important tool that will help us maneuver through the ups and downs of life and I know as a new Muslim it seems like there is a lot coming at you all at one time and there's so much to learn. So I advise you to prioritize, to prioritize your learning, to study the creed, the authentic and correct belief of the deen of Islam, to study this as much as you possibly can and to place importance upon learning your prayer. Don't take it all at once and strive to do it all at once, but Pace yourself, bithnilahi ta'ala, when it comes to the learning of your prayer. So concentrate on learning Surah Al-Fatiha. Put much emphasis into this, bithnilahi ta'ala. And as it relates to the adhkar, the supplications that are said throughout the prayer, then learn this as best as you can, bithnilahi ta'ala, and take your time in doing that. But put your focus and your emphasis on the prayer, because the prayer is more than your lifeline now it's more than your lifeline but it is that which is vital and even saying vital is not given it is due because that's how important it is and that's how much benefit you will see it having inside of your life so no matter what happens never stop praying always pray no matter what happens never abandon the prayer you know, there was a, an individual who was given da'wah at one of the da'wah tables that people, they, they set up inside of the public areas. And they were not knowledgeable about the deen of al-Islam. Uh, but they were trying. But unfortunately, when you find that your calling to Islam is based upon ignorance, you can end up doing more harm than good. So I advise everyone, if you're going to call to the deen of Islam, know what you're talking about. Learn. Learn your religion. Learn your religion and be a scholar in that which you're calling to. Meaning, know inside and out whatever topic it is you, that you're going to be speaking about. This doesn't mean you have to be a scholar over across the board and the deen, but know inside and out what you're talking about and what you're calling to. Okay? Ala kulli hal, an individual who wanted to accept Islam was studying about Islam, but in their estimation, it seemed as if there was a lot to learn and it was overwhelming. Yeah. So this was the cause of their hesitation, that it seemed like it was just too much to learn and things like that. And they asked about the prayer. 
this individual told them, take things step by step, take things gradually. And when it comes to the prayer, as long as you pray just once a week, then you're okay, right? Just start by praying once a week and then move on from there and add on to it. Subhanallah, what a calamity this is, right? What a calamity this is. This is some of the worst advice you can possibly give anyone. This is from the worst advice you can possibly give anyone. Now, I want you to compare what this individual is saying. Just pray once a week. Firstly, the religious non-Muslims pray more than once a week. So, yeah, subhanAllah, how absurd is even this, right? How absurd is this? As Muslims, we know we take the prayer more serious than everybody. So for you to diminish the status of the prayer by telling, oh, just pray once a week is fine, and then add on to that. Yeah, subhanAllah, this, is, makes, this makes no sense in any which way, shape, or form. Sheikh Zayd al-Makhali, so we can get some understanding of the true scale of the prayer, right? And the true effects of it as relates to your salvation, as relates to your success. He mentions, and I want you to pay very close attention to this, the translation of it, he mentions, he says, Iblis was expelled. Iblis, the shaitan, the devil. He was expelled. Expelled from where? Expelled from the heaven. Why? Because he refused to do one prostration that he was commanded to do. He refused to do one prostration that he was commanded to do. So what, therefore, do you think will be the recompense for the one who refuses five prayers every single day in which there are 34 obligatory prostrations i want reflect on this iblis was expelled from the jannah because he refused to prostrate one prostration he was commanded to do so what do you think is going to be the result of the individual who refuses to pray five times a day and thus refuses to prostrate 34 prostrations that are obligatory upon them that they have been commanded to do. Iblis was kicked out of Jannah because he refused to do one prostration. Do you think you are going to enter into the Jannah while you are refusing 34 prostrations a day? So the prayer is extremely important. We know that it's obligatory upon us. This is from those things that we have to know with necessity. The obligation of the prayer. Allah Ta'ala commands us to establish the prayer in the Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commanded us to establish the prayer and informed us that the deen is built upon five pillars from them, the prayer. So praying is non-negotiable. We have to pray, okay? So focusing on the prayer, focusing on learning your prayer and never giving up your prayer and understand that whatever you may go through in life, because you're gonna go through hard times, you're gonna go through difficult times, you're gonna go through things that are very challenging. People are gonna come against you, especially as a new Muslim. People who you thought were your friends are gonna turn their backs on you. Your family members, some of them may turn their backs on you. They may disown you. They may kick you out. They may abandon you, right? You, you, you will become ostracized in certain circles where previously you were accepted. This happens for a lot of new Muslims. But what is going to be your biggest weapon against these adversities is what? It's the prayer. Because the prayer, this is your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time that you can have that private conversation between you and your Lord. This is that time that you could beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, in the prayer. And listen to what Allah Ta'ala says. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبِ That whoever fears Allah, then Allah will give them a way out. A way out of every difficulty. So whatever difficulties you may be going through as a new Muslim, if you fear Allah, Allah will make for you a way out. Now, what comes at the head of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is what? It is praying your prayers. 
praying your prayers. Now, this does not mean that you pray your prayers and they have to be a half an hour each, that you pray your prayers and you have to stand there for an hour at a time. No, 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 no. Pray your prayers. Pray your prayers to the best of your ability, but pray your prayers. Pray your prayers to the best of your ability, but pray your prayers. And this is what I will say to all of the new Muslims. Pray to the best of your ability, but make sure that you pray Bismillah ta'ala. Because if you do this, no matter what difficulty you may encounter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make for you a way out. Not just make for you a way out, but Allah Ta'ala, He says, And He will provide you, He would give you provisions, He would give you yani, a means of escape from ways in which you did not imagine. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He will take care of you. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He would remove you from all of those difficulties, He will give you a victory, ultimately. If you fear him and there is no may there's no way that you can possibly think that you fear him while you are refusing to prostrate yourself unto him. So be diligent on your prayers. To the best of your ability, never stop praying because the prayer is more than your lifeline. Is more than a lifeline. In the liqa. استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته